it's kind of the long game that I'm after. Good morning, beautiful people. Oh, never mind. Good afternoon. 30 minutes late. 30 minutes late. I walked outside. I was doing some stuff. It's like, all right, I'm, I'll come back, grab the camera, start the video. Yeah, now it's 12.30, so yeah. technically not morning. I picked up the camera right at the right time because <laughs> you are starting your project inside and yes. I am headed out to start my project of the day. Right. So what are you working on? Uh, I'm going to work on canning beans today. Why can't you just buy them from the store? Because I'm lazy and I don't want to go to the store. <laughs> I don't think that makes you lazy. Well, I just don't like going to the store <laughs> and I have a bunch of dry beans. We were talking about this earlier. You uh, made some notches last night. It was one of those, what do I have? What can I make yeah. for dinner real quick? And nachos, I mean, who doesn't love nachos? Right. Well, they didn't have any beans because we don't have any canned beans currently. I have kind of stopped buying canned beans because I just keep our beans dry. Yeah. And I'll make them as we need them, but I mean, that's not a quick thing to throw together with nachos. No. <laughs> so, you know, the nachos were good and all that, but. You just needed a little need, more. You need a little extra, yeah. you know, stick to your ribs. Yeah. And so she gets up last night. I, I was headed off for, to bed and she like gets up. She's like, I'm going to soak some beans. I was like, what? She's like, I'm going to can beans tomorrow. Uh, so that way I have them ready next time we have nachos. <laughs> Anyways, today I get to go out um, when we went to go milk the cow this morning, we've had a lot of rain. A lot. a lot, a lot of rain. Last week was one of the wettest, dreariest weeks we've had in a very long time. And while it was very nice, because I do enjoy the rain, I don't enjoy mud. Uh, so it's, uh, it's hard to remain positive when you're just seconds from losing your boot in the mud. Yeah. So the cow, right around where we set the hay, gets worked into absolute muck. And when we went out there today, apparently last night, she decided to sleep in said muck. Yes. And I had to hose the cow off before we could milk because That's my gross. little my little bucket of hot soapy water is not gonna clean that. So hosed her down, scrubbed her down, got her somewhat clean, put her in the stanchion, and then did my normal washing. Right. And it was just like, okay. She was so nasty. Uh, we're gonna move her today. Yes. You know, she's got hay that she can sleep on, but for whatever reason, last night she slept too close to the mud yeah. and must have rolled over in the night. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Time so, to move her. Time to move her. So, I'm gonna go move her. All right. All right, while that tractor warms up, I would use the lawnmower, but I think I'd get stuck. Lawnmower is the easiest and fastest to move the stanchion, and I kind of designed it that way. Where she's at, I could get the stanchion out, but I would still have to, she's still got a lot of hay in that hay ring, um, so I'll pick that up with the tractor and move that. Probably have to give her another bale, either today or tomorrow, but soon. So it's actually perfect timing for moving. I guess I'll, I'll just explain it right now. In the future, I think now that we've had the cow for over a year, we're going to stick with a dairy animal. We really enjoy having a dairy cow. Um, when it was just her and the calf was small, we had about, oh, a little over a month and a half, almost two months of grass, which was perfect. But now that Biscuit, the calf, now that he's full-sized, supporting two full-sized cows in the peak of summer when all the grass is growing like crazy. This past summer, we were probably down to a little over a month, maybe like 40 days, something like that. Definitely have to watch out about how many cows we have with the grass that we have. We only have like two and a half acres of grass and the more garden we put in or greenhouses or whatever, the more grass we lose. Basically, we've started talking about any project we do. Oh, that's gonna be a project that costs us like two or three cow days worth of grass. All right, so here's the end of the orchard down here, right over here, kind of by the driveway. The entire time we've been here, we've never grown good grass. And in fact, right there, that strip right along the driveway, you can see there's some hay right there from, oh gosh, it was probably September when we moved her through here. There is hardly any grass that grows in here, and the only thing that does grow is this stuff. This is broom sage. They don't really eat it. Even if it's the only thing around, they would rather step on it and poop on it than eat it. 
So, what we're gonna do is, because we're feeding hay, we're gonna take a page out of Sean and Beth Doherty's book. We're gonna feed hay here. Everything that gets dropped will get worked in. Um, I'll probably put the, uh, the hay holder right up here. It'll get kind of muddy if we have any rain right down here in the bottom of this, this uh, drainage we've got. But I really want the impact, the manure, and the hay right here. And just like down there where she's really torn it up, it kind of sucks because down there was good grass and we'll be lucky if it recovers this year. The nice thing about the impact is once I have a little bit of impact right here and hay, I can seed it. I'm going to seed it with just some just pasture mix that I have. It's, I mean, it's got everything. Clover, hairy vetch, I mean, everything. A whole bunch of nitrogen fixing pasture things that the cow loves. Various places where I've seeded, some of it comes up and does good, but right here, this is the problem area. So, this is where we're gonna move, and this is where we're gonna get set up, and uh, we're gonna experiment this year. Um, I'm gonna put the cow here, and we'll see if we can improve this rather than destroying. It's gonna look rough after she's, you know, made her impact, left her mark, but it's kind of the long game that I'm after. I'm, I'm hoping to do a little bit of impact, but for the good. So, now that tractor's warmed up, I'm gonna come down here and move the cow. today I'm gonna get started now so like we were talking about earlier I don't keep canned beans on hand anymore I used to like it was one of those things I stocked in my pantry all the time and then I was just like I think being in here and there's minimal space as it is and it's easier to keep dried beans and I'm kind of like a lowest common denominator for storage person <laughs> so the less I have to work for the storage the better and dried beans just works out really well. But when it comes to throwing together quick meals with beans, I don't have beans on hand that are quick. Every now and then, if I make a large batch, then I'll put some in the freezer, and that way I can just pull them out and defrost them and they're ready to go. I just haven't done that in a while. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna can some beans. That way I've got them on hand. They'll make quick lunches or dinners or whatever. And then I don't have to go to the store and buy beans, which seems silly if I have a bunch of dried beans on hand. So I have a beans, I have a pressure canner, I got jars. We're gonna make this happen. So it starts with soaked beans. So I put these in last night and soaked them. And then I got my jars. I have water boiled, which I'll be pouring into the jars with the beans. And then I've got my pressure canner ready because beans are a non-acidic food and they need to be pressure canned. What are these? What are what? Beans. Those are black-eyed peas. And those are chickpeas. So black-eyed peas, chickpeas. I'm not gonna pre-cook these because I'm afraid of them turning out mushy. So I'm following the method that Three Rivers Homestead does for her beans where she actually soaks them in her jar, drains them, pours hot water in them, and then cans them. That's a pre-measured method. I'm doing the same thing. I just soaked it all in a bowl, and I'm gonna fill my, my jars rather than soaking them in the jars. I'm gonna fill these up to the neck, which is one inch, because I'm gonna give these one inch headspace. So are you doing it? Okay, put them in. Go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Okay, a little bit more. Can you put a little bit more in there? All right, next jar. Go ahead. All right, we're gonna put that in here and we'll do, we'll just do a mix if we have to. A mix of beans. Okay, I think we should have soaked a lot more beans. Okay. <laughs> All right, buggy. Now we gotta put hot water in him. So I want you to make sure you don't touch, okay? This is gonna be hot, hot water.
Alrighty, I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer slash boil, let it vent, get the vent going for 10 minutes, put the weight on, and then we're gonna process these for 90 minutes after it comes up to pressure. For us, it's 11 pounds. Um, so, 90 minutes after it comes to pressure. They're waiting patiently. Like we see him, he's setting up a new paddock. Come get us. They're gonna be mad. There is no green grass in this paddock. You wanna see a disappointed cow? You're about to see one. This spot, I was telling Meg this morning, this spot, every time we come through this spot, it just doesn't have grass. Even in the heat of summer, when it, like July, when we're getting rain every day, it just doesn't grow grass. I might have to mow it twice, you know, before we have the cow. We're gonna put her in here, let her impact it, and then we'll seed it. Hopefully the manure, the hay, and seed, we can get another cow day out of this, because we need it. wasn't too bad of a move they really enjoyed the grass and then I put them in and I thought they were gonna bust out especially Daisy biscuit is ecstatic to be in a new pen uh, I think the cows hate the mud as much as we do and I don't blame them they're out there in it all day long and so to be on you know firm ground again I bet you they're just super happy all right I'm gonna go grab the stanchion actually I'm gonna break down the other other paddock that they were in set up biscuits uh, separation pen because we, we're still separating him at night because he's still nursing. So we take advantage of it. We can still do somewhat of a calf share. I'm gonna take down, set up another pen for him and then I'll get the stanchion and the hay ring down here and hopefully they, uh, they don't bust out while I'm away. Paddock is here. Let the ground improving begin. Did you eat everything green in that little pan? She's like, I can smell fresh grass that way. Take me that way. Sorry. I actually want you to make mud here, so I know you'll you'll manage that. Got her the new paddock. Stanchions moved. Hay's moved. Cows are moved. I just gotta go grab their water and drag hoses. I believe this is Aside from up in the woods where the pigs are, this is the farthest away from the, uh, the well house as we can get. One of the things I would like to do this year, probably gonna end up doing because we're reaching the breaking point of like absolute frustration, uh, dragging hoses, I'm probably going to put in water lines and some hose bibs around the property. I'll just rent a trencher, get all the pipe, lay it all, it needs to happen. All right, I'm gonna grab the water and I'm done. Time for lunch. So what'd you warm up, lady? I uh, just leftovers. So there's some chicken wings, some chicken dip, some corn. I'm gonna have some chicken dip. Alright. Alright, have some lunch and then I'll get back at it. So, had lunch, sat down for a little bit. Figured I'd come back out here and talk about this mess. So, I probably should have picked this up and given it to the cow because there's still, I mean, that's probably, yeah, this is probably half of a bale of hay. There's a lot of really good hay still in there, but I actually have uses for it. I need hay for 
covering up this mud, which I'll get in here. I have to do that with a pitchfork. I can't do it with the tractor, but I will have to get the tractor in here to pick up the bulk of this so I can go give the, uh, the piglets some hay. Um, they're gonna need hay just to keep them out of the mud. Tis the season for mud. It's just a fact of life right now. So I think what I'll do is I'll get the tractor, I'll put the grapple on, I'll get in here, pick the bulk of this up, take a whole ton to the, uh, the guinea hog piglets, and then some of this stuff that's real soiled, I can get in here and I'll load it up and uh, I can put it on our beds. Hi Millie, you found me. One of the things on my list was to uh, mulch all of the beds and I ended up not getting to it. And so here we are. Now, I realize this is fall spring. It is definitely not spring yet. And this is the beginning of February, uh, having a nice 60 degree day. While it does feel very nice, and it is very nice to be outside in the sun and just beautiful weather, this fall spring fools us. And we start wanting to plant everything and get outside and do stuff. And then it's usually in March, we have some like really cold, snowy weather. So I'm not gonna, totally go overboard with garden stuff just yet. But it doesn't change the fact I need to mulch some beds. So I'm gonna get the tractor in here, maybe a wheelbarrow or something, load up some hay and I'll start any extra I have after I've covered up the mud, I'm gonna take and start top dressing our beds with hay. Um, hay works, I used it last year towards June. June is our driest month. And honestly, it started feeling like I was back in the desert of California last year. It stopped raining in May, and we didn't get any rain until after the 4th of July, and everything dried out. It was kind of kind of scary for a little bit, but it made me realize I need to be drought proof even in an area of the country that gets tons of rain. And so that's where mulching comes in. So I'm going to get to uh, get some mulch down. All right, so as you can see, these guys are really muddy. And that's always my cue that they've eaten all their bedding up inside their house. I mean, there's a little bit of hay in there, but for the most part, they've eaten it. See, they're eating it now. I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna pitch some of that hay in there. That way they can get out of the mud. Usually the next day, after I've given them a nice deep bed to sleep in, I'll come out and all that mud will be gone. Man, nothing but smacking. <laughs> Pigs are the noisiest eaters. This is kind of my favorite. Watching them go in there. And they, they make themselves a bed and then begin eating it. You know, maybe what it's been is uh, I just haven't had good hay, and this particular hay is really nice hay. All the animals love it. Yeah, if they're, uh, if they're wanting to eat it rather than make a bed out of it, that's fine too. Alright, so I haven't really messed with any of these. Those are the remnants of the peppers. That bed is still tore up from digging up sweet potatoes. And actually, some of the peppers are still on one of those plants. They froze to death before I got to them. Um, so I'm just going to come in and start putting hay down. All of the beds need hay. I'm not going to have enough hay for all the beds. So I'm just going to put them where I can easily get with the tractor, which having these hills like this, I didn't build this with a tractor in mind. Maybe not so set up for getting a tractor in here, which is fine. Uh, I feel like I'm uh, relying on the tractor too much these days, and it kind of bothers me. So, because I know someone's gonna bring it up. Ben, when you were over there talking about hay on your pasture, you said it's full of seeds, and now you're putting that in your garden. Isn't that a bad idea? Isn't that making more work for yourself? You're gonna have grass seed in your garden. Yeah, more or less. 
Uh, but the thing about gardening is you're gonna have to pull some weeds. Alrighty, got one more bed to do. About out of hay, I might be able to get one more scoop, but I need the rest of that to spread on all the mud. Um, I'm actually gonna wait, I'm just gonna leave it. It's gonna drive me crazy for a few days, but I need it to dry out and when it's not supposed to rain until Thursday. So probably Wednesday. Hopefully I don't have something else going on that pushes it off, but I'm gonna leave that until Wednesday. It'll be nice and dry over there. Reason being is the tractor is tearing up. Like me and Meg took a day and spread out. Last time we moved the cow, we spread all the hay on all the mud. And it was nice, but I think it was too muddy because as I ran through it, it's anaerobic because the hay was too thick and the mud was too wet. So I'm gonna let it dry out a little bit and then cover it with hay just so we don't have that. So I think this is about as deep as I wanna go on these beds. Um, I'm happy with this. A lot of this hay has manure in it, which I want to encourage soil life. All right, I am just about out of daylight for doing this. I'm gonna call it a day for right now. I have a bunch of work I need to do to this bed. All of our broccoli, Brussels sprouts. I mean, there's still like, I see one Brussels sprout that might be doable, maybe two. Um, the rest I'm just gonna rip out and either feed to the chickens or turn them into compost or both. But yeah, I need to get all this cleared out, cleaned up, and then mulched. Just gonna do it for the outside segment. What'd you make, lady? I've been Meat gone. We haven't had meatballs in a long time. It's been a long time. You got some... Yeah, I had a little bit of corn and a little bit of collard greens left from the other night, so I just threw them together. Put them together and yeah. made corn greens. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then I got brown <laughs> rice and the instant pot. All right, so even though the days are getting longer and we have daylight later, we were actually just talking about this. Meg looks at the clock and she's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. It's like I'm making dinner so late. And it dawned on her. It's because the days are lighter, yeah. longer, and apparently she's been making dinner with the daylight. I just make it with the sun. That's all right. We, we were talking how it would be to live with the daylight. Yeah, like, like it used to be. Like you get up with the sun, you go to bed with the sun. You would get a lot of sleep in wintertime. You would. And you would get very little sleep in the summertime, especially in the more northern latitudes. Mm -hmm. Which is fine, we get very little sleep in the summer as it is. Yeah, that's true. All right. You ready? Let's eat. All right. Can you guys get the table cleared off? All right. That was a good dinner. And I'm like ready for bed now. All right. Because the sun's down. The sun's down. Hey, it's legal to go to bed once the sun goes that's down. That's right. That's right, it is. Uh, I think what's weird, working nights as much as I did, it kind of messed up like my circadian rhythm. And it has taken probably six years to like yeah. finally start feeling like I'm back on a day schedule. Mm -hmm. So I know any of you all who uh, work night shift, it messes you up. It does. Ain't any kind of normal life. All right, all that aside. <laughs> Don't bring it down. <laughs> Dinner was really good. Good. Even though I wasn't very hungry. That's all right. I ate lunch so late, and then it was like all protein. It was just like, I'm good to go. Good to go. That's all right. Like I said, somebody around here will eat it. Yes. <laughs> all right. That's going to do it for us for today. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.